A very horrible condition just happened, frightened by circumstances that could threaten one's life. A man named Noctis ran because he was chased by a giant monster behind him. Monsters have large bodies and have super strong powers capable of destroying a place and its inhabitants. A woman shouted for protection from a monster who approached her. Noctis immediately used his scaling skill to try to help save the woman who was hysterically frightened by the monster who wanted to attack her. A father came to save his daughter from the danger of ferocious monsters. The girl hid behind the man who came. There were residents of the area who would follow. This was not a problem as her brother was strong enough for this. Later, a favor would come. The time will come to fight again, for tomorrow will not get the skill at all. His father had spoiled him, so this was the result. Everyone has their own territory. Even if it was only one orc, it was hard to believe that any orc would attack that territory again later. There were so many strange things happening in this forest. They looked around to make sure it was safe enough. At that time, Noctis was resting in his bedroom casually. Everyone in this world has their own path that is different from each other. Having a father who was intelligent like the sun made him fit to be a nobleman. There were some people who had taken the path to make the most of it. When in his room, Noctis had the talent of being able to fall asleep at a moment's notice no matter the situation. Noctis seems to be stricter in managing himself than others. In his mind, he didn't want to have to work again. The trauma was so deep that he almost died from spending too much time working all day to make ends meet. In Japan, he worked as a slave for the company. One day, Noctis's chest felt very painful. Earlier, he had realized that he was a baby in a manor house. In this cruel world, when the man becomes an adult at the age of 15, God will do what is human destiny. It seemed that the man could gain a skill that allowed him to fight with that power. It was Noctis's 15th year. For Noctis, it was the worst birthday that ever happened to him after eating and sleeping. On his birthday, Noctis didn't get any cake, but someone gave him a delicious cake that would later be given to Noctis. There was someone who came at that time he approached Noctis. He did not want to go to the royal capital because he was not feeling well. A woman gave Noctis a painkiller so that Noctis would take the medicine to relieve the pain he was experiencing. She also had a medicine for illness in her right pocket. This was a good opportunity for Noctis to see a wider world than what he had seen. This opportunity wasn't just about the skills performed. He arrived in a very busy city. It was the capital of the empire that Noctis was visiting. There is an inn. Noctis was curious about how magnificent the bed for lodgers was. It's been a few days since Noctis was worried about something. There are things that have not been destroyed by monsters. Noctis made sure that the place was very safe if he stayed there. Noctis then went somewhere and spawned a second son of the Lord who was expected to have skills in combat. If he was born in this place, Noctis wondered if he didn't have to fight hard. Noctis was surprised that he was standing on the water. Noctis immediately expressed his gratitude. It was quite a difficult place that Noctis was born. His sister Noctis looked strong like a demon, but his father was kind and loved by everyone in this very kind world. Noctis had logistical support skills. Skills were everything else apart from the battles that were fought. His brother would inherit the power. It seemed like Noctis had successfully acquired the skill. Noctis placed his hand on the judgment crystal. The expectations and responsibilities that had been placed on the feudal lord's family. The pressure must have been very painful. Noctis was confused as to what skill he had just seen. Noctis saw something in that face. This skill was the type of combat that would be used. Noctis would use the skills that had been given to him by working hard from now on. Besides, any skill can depend on how it is used. Noctis would live his life in his own way. Noctis relaxed again by lying down. The woman asked the fig about something good that would happen. Noctis replied that he could go home and sleep relaxed like this. Although the woman was very young, she was not yet capable of fighting with such useless skills. Noctis brought some souvenirs that he would give her and then would give them time to rest for a while. Noctis returned from the city with a lot of knickknacks that he showed. He remembered that Noctis's father used to love the royal tower. Urban accessories have been obtained by Noctis easily. The woman will leave soon. 
Noctis also wanted his sister to wear an eye patch and make her date Masamuni. Noctis is standing in a place with a lot of damage. A lot of buildings that have been destroyed are badly damaged. Seeing such conditions and conditions. Noctis could not sleep comfortably, let alone sleep soundly. A man realized that Noctis had returned. The butler Joseph stood with his face and clothes very dirty. He had no idea what was going on. There was an attack coming from the orcs. A large army had invaded from a large forest. Noctis was astonished to see Father Joseph. Noctis's father and brother should be there. Noctis's father, Mr. Tutherfrod, and Noctis's brother, Mr. Wishard, have also yet to be found anywhere. Four days have passed. The thing that didn't need to be thought about, finally behind them, bravely took the lead. Noctis didn't expect the two of them to lose when the monster attacked violently. Mr. Jospe apologized because what was done was very difficult. Joseph told Noctis that the skills that would be acquired in the royal capital were what the fate of the territory at stake would be. Noctis thought of himself as the most vulnerable. If Noctis used his skills, he wondered if he would become like a horse. Then make him like an ant. It's not very comfortable, said Noctis. There was something surprising going on. The unknown person asked Mr. Noctis what he could do with this kind of territory. Of course, if this happened unexpectedly, then it would be using tempura skills that could be done if everyone went to the neighboring territory. It was probably the only way. Noctis was not allowed to escape. If Noctis escaped, then he would not be able to escape a death sentence. No one can be defeated in this case by anyone. Just think for yourself and decide what has become an agreement. Anyway, there is no way that Noctis's sister can elope with monsters in the near future like this. Noctis was a little puzzled about whether he would move to the neighboring territory, because they were the only ones left here. On the other hand, Noctis must have his father and older brother. Actually, Noctis had enjoyed his life. This territory is everyone's territory if you succeed in it. Make sure to provide protection in the way that is available to yourself. When he arrived at his bed, Noctis slept so peacefully that he didn't even care about the people around him. Mr. Joseph saw Noctis sleeping in this situation. Joseph thought that Noctis was crazy just thinking about sleeping in his daily life. Jospe who approached and watched Noctis fall asleep that the rate of saliva secretion decreased drastically during sleep. There was no sign of Noctis swallowing saliva during sleep. Noctis was really asleep. While the large and small territories may no longer exist, Noctis had slept for twelve hours. Jospe asked Mare to go to the neighboring territory right now. The condition outside is no longer possible because a lot of severe building damage has occurred. There is also only one large house left in this area. Some of the facilities are still fit for use. No one can be blamed for this. He could not do it. Human resources to food are only a few. The fence was also badly damaged. When the monster came back to this place, then it could happen very easily for the monster. Noctis woke up from his long sleep. Noctis said good morning to Jospe and Mare who were together. Noctis thanked Mare and Joseph for taking Noctis for the night. Noctis wanted to restore the big and small scenery for hundreds of years. Noctis wants to get his father and brother to come back with him. Noctis offered Mare to come with him. Mare happily agreed to the invitation from Noctis. Mare asked Joseph for permission to serve Noctis well. Currently, she is happy because the house is safe. Food can also be secured well. Clothes, shelter, and shelter too. Noctis expressed his gratitude for the things Mare had made. It was amazing not to lose everything under these circumstances. Now Noctis could take a shower and then wash his clothes. Joseph, who was already starting to starve because he hadn't eaten anything since yesterday. Mare had collected consumable food and served it to Noctis and Joseph. Most of the food reserves were left behind in the area, and some were brought by them. Mare, who was on a diet, asked Noctis and Joseph to eat a lot of food because it would be impossible for a single mare to finish it all by herself. They will divide their food into three parts to be eaten together. With conditions like that, they are very grateful to still be able to eat a meal that is quite suitable for consumption. After eating, Noctis suddenly became unconscious. Mare and Mr. Joseph were very worried and tried to resuscitate Noctis at that time. Mare told Noctis to eat his food because Mare was already full. There were many neighboring territories that did so. 
Now, not knowing how, Noctis had no choice but to do it. Would the feudal landlord make things the same again as in the beginning? Noctis felt that he would die if he worked too much every day. There were only three people left in the ruined area. No one else wants to live in such a devastated place. How to survive in these difficult conditions must be well thought out. Those who still lived there seemed to want to clean up the dirty place by working together. Noctis, who was sitting after his exercise, intended to sleep. Noctis is indeed a person who likes to sleep a lot. Moreover, he slept for a long time. While the very good mare had prepared lunch for Joseph and Noctis who were outside. Today, mare has cooked a delicious meal. Jospe couldn't wait to eat because he was starving. Today, the weather outside is very nice. The sun is also very amazing today. Mare cooked the food, but she didn't want to eat because she was full. The food recipes made by Mare were different from the previous dishes, so that Mr. Jospe and Noctis did not feel bored because they had to eat it continuously. The three of them sat at the dining table. Mare had cooked bitter melon, which tasted bitter. Even so, bitter melon has good properties for health. Mare first cooked it with sesame oil to accentuate the bitter taste. The content in bitter melon can lower blood sugar levels. Mare told Mr. Jospe and Noctis to eat the fried bitter gourd. The bitter taste can restore fatigue. After the oily food is eaten, then eat pickled bitter gourd, which feels very refreshing with bitterness. The more bitter the taste, the fresher it will be even to the liver gland. Joseph was really bored if he had to eat bitter food like this every day. Likewise, Noctis did not want to overeat bitter vegetables that tasted like this. Mare apologized to Mr. Jospe and Noctis for the food that she had blinded. If Mare is given the opportunity to cook again, it will taste good, Mare assured Joseph and Noctis. It was only the second day for Joseph and Noctis, and the bitter gourd was painful to the mouth. Noctis also felt very lethargic and unmotivated due to lack of nutrients such as iron. Meanwhile, vegetables in the field usually take about 30 days to mature. Mare asks them to wait for a while before leaving. Maria will try to give iron to Noctis. Bitter melon is rich in iron. It is a mistake not to be motivated. Mare also said that there were many things to do. Joseph whispered to Noctis that Mare seemed to be acting strangely in the end. After finishing the meal and debating the dishes that were made, Noctis wanted to sleep and rest for a while in his room. A few minutes later, Noctis opened the door. Mare and Joseph were sitting. At that moment, Joseph asked for help to Noctis who had just woken up. Noctis said that if the diet is not balanced, the quality of sleep will slowly decrease, which is what Noctis has experienced for the past few days. There are a number of issues that need to be addressed in both large and small areas. Repairing damaged fences, establishing sustainable food production, procuring human resources, leveling land within the region, securing trading partners, and improving private farms. This is the foundation for the community to perform well. The list has been written on a piece of paper. Noctis was traumatized by eating bitter melon and did not want to eat it again. So the action that Noctis will take is to give priority to food improvement. The three of them would split up and look for food in the area. Mare at that time went to Sammy's farm in the field. Noctis accidentally found an omnivore slime jelly. Noctis lifted and took the jelly slime. Noctis will make the jelly slime as a pillow and try to sleep on the jelly slime. The shape of the jelly slime is elastic. There is a rumbling sound like a pillow filled with water. It seems that the jelly slime is very compatible with Noctis. The smell of jelly slime is like the smell of strawberries, maybe because Noctis is eating fruit. Jelly slime was probably born in this world to be a pillow for Noctis who really likes to sleep. A few minutes ago, Noctis began to feel something strange that Noctis felt there was a disgusting power from the jelly slime. Maybe it wasn't good for strong people. Noctis who tried to shrink himself. Then he found a bird-like species called Kiyuyenaga, which is very friendly to humans. Currently the Kiyuyenaga is in extinction. Noctis tries to climb into the Kiyuyenaga's body so he can fly. Noctis who managed to climb on the body of the Kiyuyenaga and returned to throw his body down. The view is very spectacular, a new sensation experienced by him. Noctis found a new bed, the Shingu Tan. It felt very hot because it was close to the ground, although the bed felt very comfortable. Mare who saw Noctis was very small and very funny to her. 
Mare was confused about what Noctis was doing to be so small. Mare said that because the fence was broken, all the fields were destroyed by monsters. Mare thought about joining them for once. Noctis was just shocked. Noctis asked Mare to keep an eye on Joseph so that he would not come to see Noctis, who was enjoying relaxing and lying down in a new place. If Joseph found out, he would be angry with Noctis again. Mare was ready to do that and would not tell Joseph about Noctis's whereabouts. The sun was so hot that Noctis needed help from Mare to cover the sun, while relaxing. Noctis asked Mare what she was doing in a place like this, but Mare was just silent. Noctis noticed that Mare seemed to be talking to someone from a distance. It turned out to be Mr. Joseph who came to see Mare. Noctis immediately hid. Mr. Joseph still wanted to check the place he saw. Mare will cry if Mr. Joseph doesn't listen to her wishes. The surprising arrival of Joseph and arguing with Mare made Noctis's small body feel like it was being hit by an earthquake because the pounding of their feet was very large compared to Noctis's body. The incident dislocated Noctis's leg. Mr. Yaspe apologized to Noctis. Mare helped fix Noctis's sprained foot. Noctis thanked Mare because his leg was not as painful as before. They will return to planting vegetables in the previously prepared soil. A few days later, the shoots began to appear on the ground. Mare, who knew that Noctis was sleeping at that time, was snoring so loudly that it disturbed Mare's hearing who was outside. Mare, who was releasing her moves, made Noctis wake up from his sleep spontaneously. Noctis noticed a strange behavior in Mare. Mare will order to eat the plants that are eaten as many as ten pieces. The story of ten years ago. There was a man named Sammy. There were many people who ate vegetables in Mare's field. Then the person was put in jail. Then apologized to Sammy. It's not a joke to eat those vegetables. Keep apologizing to survive. If you are attacked continuously, you will not be able to live. Noctis had already done a lot of things from a small extended family member, always protecting what they felt was their territory. Therefore, he would never allow anything bad to happen again. At that moment, Noctis asked Mare who her name was. At that time, Noctis made his bed. Mare also felt that she should die alone. But Noctis has helped Mare. Now it's Mare's turn to readily help Noctis. When Noctis was in trouble and Mare didn't do anything, then it was useless for her to be here if she didn't do anything. Mare continued to cast her spell. Noctis, who closed his eyes at that moment, wanted to activate the cells and speed up healing. Scale and organization also apply to living things. Mare asked Noctis to do it one more time. Eventually, they managed to do so using their skills. The plants grew again and a flower bloomed. There seemed to be a way to utilize scaling. The plant that grew in front of the courtyard grew so large that it outgrew the house. As a product that can stand on its own, it is now showing its true potential. This kind of thing is difficult to prove. By applying a skill, the possibilities become endless. Noctis had combined the activities of the mare cell with his expansion. His power worked well. Some of the other plants in the garden also flourished, thanks to the skills that Noctis and Mare had practiced. At a time like this, there were two hardworking people by Noctis' side. He also felt happy, so Noctis provided further support as well. Joseph, who was already awake at that time, also knew about the food problem that had been resolved slowly and well. For Joseph, avocado and arugula and fried green beans are good food. This way the diet will be balanced. Health is the most important thing when living in this world. Mare, who had cooked a stir-fry of smoked green beans and peppers and a vegetable soup with many toppings, was a very good nutrition. The three of them at the dining table happily ate the food they had harvested so far. That day, they ate a lot, and some food was still there to stock up for the day when they were hungry. Now they have more food ingredients to be processed into a delicious menu. The three of them, consisting of Noctis, Joseph, and Mare, felt very grateful for this. So now there was no reason for Mare to be lazy in cooking. Mare must learn more about making delicious and healthy food. Mare will continue to strive to cook delicious food. Noctis and Joseph are eager to eat meat. Mare will prepare the next dish as their request. In this world, the only skill a person has is magic. Attributes such as fire, water, wind, earth, light, and darkness could be used for magic. 
Noctis felt grateful to have been blessed with earth and fire. A fire magician who was loved by the god of fire. About half a month of pioneer life, finally able to taste it. After eating, Noctis took a bath in the swimming pool, which was very fresh, while Masters Joseph and Mare brought some clothes to the pool. At that time, Joseph asked for a rag for his glasses that had already been used. Mayor said that this was the first time that Joseph's glasses had condensed. Noctis, who was swimming, heard the conversation between Mayor and Joseph behind him. Noctis asked them to stop talking, because it was very noisy and disturbed his peace. Noctis also said that tomorrow there would be bargaining. Joseph also told him that today the seller Rail was coming. Real was a person who was very close to Joseph's father. Rael is a skilled swordsman who can prepare anything. You can imagine us as buyers being served well by Rael. Everyone must be very happy when shopping and dealing with him. Noctis, Mare, and Joseph gathered their hands and had the intention to buy at a low price and then live a comfortable and prosperous pioneer life. The hopes of the three of them for the success of this plan were very high. Full of confidence, they will do the masses that they have deformed one by one must be carried out properly and on target. Noctis immediately welcomed Ryle, who had arrived on his long journey. Noctis was very happy to be able to meet Rail in person that day. There were Joseph and Mare who accompanied him. Mare immediately offered Rail to eat, because the long journey must have been very hungry. Rail asked Noctis if he was the new master here. Noctis confirmed the answer that he was the new master named Noctis. Rael also introduced himself as a swordsman. Noctis actually already knows who Rael is who has been conveyed by Mr. Joseph. Rael is a very good person. Only the first time he met Noctis was welcomed by Rael. At once Noctis was amazed, seeing Rael's care for him, which not everyone could do to every person he had just met. Rael told Noctis that Noctis's father had cared for Rael from the beginning. Noctis's father was a good figure in Rael's eyes. His kindness continues to be remembered by Rael until now, so that he can tell it to his son, Noctis, who has grown into an independent adult man. Currently, the teaching of the trading business that is being carried out by Rael is one of the teachings that Mr. Rutherford often gave at that time. Until now, Rael still continues to apply it to his business efforts to continue to rise. Noctis, who unconsciously smelled Rael's body odor that smelled of mint, was very refreshing. Rael asked Noctis not to be shy about telling him what he currently needed. Rael will help what he can best help. Rael invited the three of them to start trading. Noctis was amazed by Rael's smart figure and personality. Rael had prepared something for the three of them and told them to keep what he had given them in a bag he was carrying. Noctis, who wanted to have a new pillow. But unfortunately, there were no pillows for sale or owned by Rail. Suddenly, Rail took out the pillow he had and gave it to Noctis, the pillow lover. Mare also asked for something she needed from Arl, and it turned out to be there too. Mare was very happy. Something she wanted could finally be achieved, thanks to the arrival of Rail. Noctis, who immediately took the pillow. Noctis took a moment to observe the type of pillow he got from Rail. Noctis held the memory foam pillow. All the things they needed at that moment were there, and Rael was able to fulfill their respective needs quickly. Mare was very excited by Rael's awesomeness, while Noctis, who continues to feel surprised by the surprises after surprises given by Rael. Noctis wanted to be able to act like Rael, but he probably had to learn a lot about it first. When the session ended, Noctis, who was in the mood to sleep, used the memory foam pillow that he got from Rael earlier. After a long time, Noctis was uncomfortable sleeping on the pillow. Maybe it's because it's not cocoa, or it doesn't fit Noctis's head. Anxiety arose in Noctis, who had received a memory foam pillow. That night, Noctis quietly came and found Mr. Rail resting in his room. Noctis offered Mr. Rail to just sleep in his room. Rail refused and preferred to sleep in the current place. Noctis seemed to be worried if Mr. Rail had to sleep in the current place. Rail was not so worried about him. While in Mr. Rail's place, Noctis simply talked alone with him. Chatting with Rail was fun, and the conversation was very relevant. Noctis, who asked while asking Rail that he wanted to hang out with Noctis, they both joked with each other because they were both people who were a little hilarious. 
At that time, Rail was confused if he was here for a very long time, then later, he would find it difficult to come to this place again, especially taking a long and quite long journey, said Rael while smoking. After returning from the tent where Rael slept, Noctis thought about the words spoken by Rael that he would not be able to come here again. Noctis again smelled mint near the area around Rael. At that time, Noctis was a bit worried because he couldn't sleep comfortably. Noctis was very happy if his sleep was smooth without any disturbances that prevented him from sleeping soundly. In the morning, the news that Rael would no longer be there reached the ears of Mare and Joseph. Mare was very surprised by the information obtained by Noctis directly. With the reason that when she was looking for food in that area, her field was destroyed by monsters. It is very cruel that a monster has no mercy on humans and other creatures in the mini style. Noctis explained that this area was very dangerous and could threaten lives. If they continue to live in a region like this, it does not guarantee that life will be peaceful and peaceful. According to Noctis, the arrival of monsters is also unpredictable when it comes. Surely whether it's morning, noon, night, monsters can just come and destroy everything without any thought. The region also no longer had any fences to protect it from threats. It was impossible for Noctis to start a business in such a dangerous place. Even the people outside did not want to come here because it could endanger their Diori. Noctis apologized to Mare and Yaspa if he decided on something that had been planned from the beginning. Noctis just didn't want the efforts built later to be wasted due to the actions of monsters who came and made damage in this region. Joseph was also very worried, especially the words of Jaspe, who would no longer want to come to a dangerous area like this. Rael was the key to successful distribution. The large and small regions have been cut off, and the development has been destroyed, so it is difficult to expect something that guarantees life. Noctis also protested that he couldn't buy his pillow. After much thought, Noctis encouraged Mare and Joseph to get back on their feet and achieve success, even though it was difficult and took a lot of work. Joseph also hoped that Rail would come back to this place. The three of them will also try to repair the damaged fence so that the area they live in can slowly return safely. Mare was still hesitant because there were only three of them in a place like this. Noctis tried to calm Mare that everything would be fine later. There was no need to worry too much. Mare will not do this alone. There are Noctis and Joseph who will protect the only woman among them and will take care of Mare in dangerous conditions. Mr. Joseph, who took off his clothes because he was doing something at the time. For Joseph, working after a bath is very refreshing for his body, heart, and dirty mind. Noctis was surprised to see that Joseph wanted to take a bath. As far as he knew, after a few days of living in this dangerous area, Joseph rarely took a bath to clean himself even though his body looked shabby and dirty. Rail, who was still in the tent, approached Noctis because he wanted to talk to Joseph. Noctis told him that Joseph was taking a shower to clean himself which was dirty due to activities that caused body sweat. Rail said that something was messed up from what he thought before. According to Rail, being a king is very hard for an immature person. In addition, this area had no fence at all. Danger would occur unexpectedly. In his mind, Rael was very concerned about an abandoned area like this. Rael was forced to be in this dangerous place. If from the beginning he knew that this area was dangerous and that no one would want to live here other than the three of them, consisting of Noctis, Mare, and Jaspe, Rael was also confused by those who wanted to stay in this chaotic condition. It seemed like the three of them had nothing left, therefore utilizing the land here to survive in the future. Rail wanted to rush away from that place before he was in danger. Rail began to prepare the items he would bring home. Noctis, who was in front of the bathroom with Joseph and Mare. Noctis acted out his expansion skills on the earth magic he used in the bathroom. Noctis was very happy if he could finish it. From a distance, Mr. Rail saw the skills released by Noctis in front of the bathroom. Although the skill is a skill or magic, it does not mean that the one who has it can do whatever he wants. The skills used would be very physically exhausting. Rael asked for the scale to be done in one night. Rael would also try his skills tomorrow. Noctis really wanted it. If it was lost tomorrow, 
then Noctis could not do anything else. Mare expressed her gratitude because she was happy to teach him. The next day, Noctis would show Rael what he had asked for. Noctis told Rael to stand up and hold both of his hands. Noctis started the action in front of Rael. A bathing place was there suddenly thanks to Noctis's skill in using his powers. Rael was only silent looking at the bathing pool in front of him. Noctis told Rael that he had not entered the pool yesterday. Then Noctis also explained that this place is a very safe friend for bathing. Rael, who wants to take a bath, does not need to worry about the arrival of scary monsters according to the anxiety he had last night while in bed. Suddenly, Noctis asked Rael for a foam pillow. Noctis would love it if he had a foam pillow so that he could sleep comfortably and soothingly than before. Noctis also hopes that Rael will come again to this place and change his mind. That was the great hope of Noctis and then his two friends who wanted Rael to cooperate well for now and the future. Rael said that a sword person has an important thing for his life. The value of something will determine a measure of the value of any monster who can do it. Noctis was confused about what he should measure at this time. Rael gave an explanation to Noctis right in front of him so that Noctis could understand what was being said. This kind of teaching is very important for a young person who is about to start a business and does not know which stage to start from. Rael compared the security in his region with the security in this place. The area he was visiting now had a lot of things that threatened the safety of his body and soul. Therefore, Rael wanted to convey that this place was not suitable for him. If it was a partnership with the three of them, Rael had no intention of severing the relationship. What he was considering now was that the safety of this place was not guaranteed. In the future, Rael would definitely come back to visit them when the situation and conditions were much better and safer to live in. Noctis shouted, saying that if a Rael did not want to try and just be lazy, just do as he pleased, it was not a serious problem. It's better for Noctis to go to lunch quietly and comfortably if the end will be like this. Rael suddenly took off his clothes and intended to bathe in a place he considered dangerous. Noctis was surprised by Arl's smooth and dirty body. His body was very good for a man. It seemed that Noctis was not the lazy person he thought he was. He had a healthy life fiber often did by hesitation. Therefore, his body was very good. Rael borrowed a towel from Noctis because when he wanted to go here, he forgot to bring a towel to clean himself. After the debate about the dangerous area, they all decided to bathe together in the pool. They enjoyed their bath time very much. Mare had also prepared some food and snacks for those in the pool. Cleaning up is very important so that the mind and body are much fresher to later think about something heavy. Rael, who was observing Joseph, said that Joseph was a strange person in contrast to the behavior of the authoritative Mr. Rutherfraud. This large and small area is planned to be made into a region that can live like before. That's what Joseph has in mind. Building the coveted territory in the imagination is not that easy. There is a lot of capital and struggle and hard work that must be done. In this case, it is not enough if only the three of them do it. There must be other parties who are involved and support the development of the region. Rail was very happy to be able to bring a gift. Rail, who came using the horse-drawn carriage behind him were several women who were standing watching Rail. There was the presence of Noctis in the place. Noctis was silent at first, not saying anything about the people he had just met. The atmosphere was indeed different because Noctis was not used to greeting people he had just seen in person. Noctis looked at the woman in front of him. The woman said not to be afraid of him. She was not a slave. Noctis thought there was a painful experience in the soul of the woman he saw before him. That could be because of discrimination. Noctis saw the woman's eyes, which indicated that she knew everything that had happened, both sour and sweet. Like a ball fork, said Noctis. Olivia was the name of the woman in front of Noctis. They both got acquainted with each other. Olivia saw Noctis as an extraordinary man. Noctis was very happy to meet Olivia, who was very beautiful. Noctis was mesmerized by Olivia, whom he had just met. Later, Noctis will always be curious about Olivia, no matter what she does. While there was a little girl named Kukura, she seemed shy because there were many people there. That's where they chat with each other and smile at each other, signaling friendliness. Mare, who also participated, just stayed silent. 
Mare saw Olivia, who was so beautiful that she was even inferior to her beauty. Even so, Mare wanted to be ordinary as she was not jealous of the friendliness of Olivia and Noctis, who were newly recognized. Two children on a horse-drawn carriage. Noctis, who saw it, was shocked. How could a child ride on a horse-drawn carriage? Noctis was just wondering. After growing up, dwarves would still have small bodies. Noctis saw a dwarf who was very dashing. Even though they were small, the dwarves were very adorable. Noctis was also anxious and wanted to pinch the dwarves who were running around very actively. The dwarf was indeed a lot of behavior, because he had just met a man named Noctis. They seemed to be doing that because they were looking for attention from Noctis. Mr. Joseph, who was beside Noctis, asked what was going on now. Without being long-winded, Noctis could only apologize to Mr. Joseph and did not explain anything. The dwarf lifted a heavy tool, according to Noctis. The dwarf denied that it was the fault of the tool, which was not suitable for their small size. Noctis and Rael chat in front of the carriage that there are many people here, and will look for some people to immigrate later. These two active dwarves are part of a dwarven family that works at the royal capital tower. He was a very prominent carpenter. Noctis called his place a kingdom. There are good people who want to come to them, said Noctis. Two dwarves who are still silly with their own behavior. They are very cool playing together without thinking about the people around them who are watching. Two dwarves were ignorant of each other. One dwarf put a bucket over his head until his head and body were covered in dirt, while the other dwarf raised a stick and hit her brother. Noctis was astonished at the behavior of the two dwarves. Noctis shared a story with the two dwarves. At that time, he had visited the royal capital tower. The building was very large. The atmosphere was so amazing that Noctis fell in love with the place. The two dwarves who listened to Noctis's story admired the place where the dwarves lived there. Suda told a long story. The dwarf was still playing like a child who was playing with his friends. This dwarf is very entertaining for Noctis. Dwarves don't mind if their bodies are small. Everyone who came might not notice the presence of the dwarf. Dwarves are very proud of themselves. The younger brother of the dwarf was the designer of the royal capital tower. Noctis did not realize that the dwarf's sister had the talent to design a building. Dwarves showed the miniature of the royal capital tower to Noctis. Noctis took the miniature and observed it. It wasn't easy to make the design of the royal capital tower. It's complicated to make since it was designed from scratch. Everyone else wouldn't make it like this either. Only certain people already had good skills. The dwarf sister was very happy that she could design the royal capital tower. At first, it took a lot of building references, after searching and collecting many building references. The younger dwarf brother began trying to design it on a white paper. Every day, the younger dwarf brother always designs buildings until he finally finds a suitable design for building the royal capital tower. Many details of the building details must be considered. Being a designer is difficult. If the design that is made is bad, people will easily mock arbitrarily. Listening to the description of the dwarf story, Noctis was amazed by the royal capital tower. Noctis was also impressed by the royal capital tower when he saw it in person. It was huge and impressive. Dwarves should not be considered as small people who are trivial. Precisely with their small body shape, dwarves are able to prove that their ideas will be good compared to other human ideas. Still praising the royal capital tower, Noctis said that the decoration was very good and luxurious. After praising one of the dwarves got angry and made a sour face at Noctis. I don't know what caused her to get angry with a sour face. In a crowded place, many people are there. Then thanked them for moving to this big and small region. For immigrants, the cost of their life insurance would be taken care of immediately and well taken care of. Now that Noctis was relieved, he could only think about vegetables. Olivia and the Kukura were pulling out vegetables. Olivia showed the vegetable carrots that had a big body in front of Noctis. The carrots pulled out by Olivia can be enlarged because of a skill that has been done by Noctis at this time, accompanied by Mare. Noctis also expanded the carrot. While in the vegetable garden, Noctis had made a transition. Olivia and Kukura tried to eat the vegetables they pulled out. Kukura ate the vegetables with gusto. Olivia is also very fond of vegetables. They were both excited to find the vegetables they liked. 
Some vegetables that have been planted by Joseph, Noctis, and Mare since the beginning can finally be harvested to produce good quality vegetables to fulfill nutritional needs. The struggle is not in vain to open land and plant vegetables. From planting these vegetables, not only the three of them can feel. There are also other people who have just come to taste the vegetables. Olivia was very happy to be living in a new house here, especially since her master was very kind and did a good job. Noctis was very happy to see them happy for all this. Noctis had a lot to be thankful for. It was hard at first. In the end, the impact of the hard work done can produce results that are quite satisfying not only for himself, but other people also feel the good impact. Kukura, who will bring a large carrot to cook later. Olivia asked Noctis what he would do next. Noctis will do many things in the future. Everything they've seen so far has been nothing at all. So the most important thing in this region is the motto that only those who want to work will get results. The motto that Noctis always held tightly so that he would not be fooled by other distractions that could hinder his big plans going forward. Noctis said that when people come here and they don't want to do anything, then don't do it if it's not what you want. Noctis will not force anyone who wants to work. Noctis only wants if the person who works is sincere from himself, not coercion or even persuasion from people. You can see the Kukura who really likes vegetables. Since the beginning he entered the vegetable garden, the Kukura was so excited. Noctis approached the Kukura and stroked its head. Noctis really liked little kids who liked vegetables. Usually children of this age choose their food and don't want to eat vegetables. Kukura is different. Vegetables are a must-have food when she eats. Therefore, when invited to this place, the Kukura did not stop smiling. This place is a paradise for the vegetable-loving Kukura. The two dwarves who were walking while carrying some goods felt very tired because they had to walk for a long time. The dwarf fell and put himself to sleep on the ground. Noctis, who saw the two dwarves, was experiencing fatigue. This region is part of Noctis and is recovering. The dwarves would not work to do anything for this territory. In accordance with what Noctis had said to Olivia that he didn't care if the people here worked or did whatever, the dwarf just decided not to work here. Noctis responded that a person actually needs to work, so if they are lazy, it is not the type of Noctis. The dwarf named Galena has a talent. It's a lie if the dwarf doesn't want to work. There will definitely be something done by Noctis. That's why, never give up. The two dwarves were noisy again in front of Noctis. Not long after, one dwarf said that the children there were smoking a turnip, and now the dwarf asked Noctis for his opinion as the adult among the others. Kakura is furious with the behavior of dwarves who don't want to work. Dwarves can only be noisy and make silliness that makes others uncomfortable. They have been told, but still these two dwarves are annoying. They want to be lazy. Living lazily is no use at all. Survival requires energy in the form of hard work. If you can only eat and sleep, there is no one who can accommodate the burden of lazy people. The same with these dwarves who are so small that they refuse to be relied upon and work hard. The behavior of both is equally ridiculous. They were very noisy. Olivia had a headache dealing with all of them. Olivia asked them to stop, but they didn't listen well. They still continued to make things that annoyed others. Noctis came to calm them down. The two dwarves were invited to the office by Noctis. The two dwarves felt comfortable because the office was cold. Unlike the hot atmosphere outside, it can cause sweat on the body. The office shown by Noctis is his father's office. Then Noctis walked into the inner area to see that part of the wall was cracked due to the monsters that attacked the large and small regions a few days ago. Noctis asked the two dwarves to fix the cracked wall, instead of them just making a scene. It was better for Noctis to employ the two dwarves so that there would be useful activities. Still in their ignorant nature, the two dwarves casually slept in the cool office. The dwarves will do as they are told by Noctis. When going in and inspecting, the dwarves asked Noctis not to obstruct the work they were about to do. It's a good opportunity for the dwarves to repair the cracked wall. They didn't have to heat up outside. When it was finished, dwarf intended to rest in the office. Noctis was forced to leave because the dwarves would not allow Noctis to monitor their work. 
Behind the outer door, Noctis was worried if something happened to the two dwarves when he was not monitored at all. Noctis remembered his mother and father. Trusting the performance of the two dwarves was what Noctis had in mind. Whatever happens, he must be able to trust the dwarves. This house is a place full of memories of a Noctis together with all family members. Now this house is quiet and filled with new people. The behavior of the invading monsters has ruined everything. Noctis had to lose his father and brother who disappeared due to the appearance of monsters. Now Noctis must be able to make peace with the circumstances that make him have to get up and survive again. Luckily, this house can still be occupied and not destroyed like the neighboring houses. Noctis can still repair and live in this house together with Joseph and Mare. Slowly, Noctis really wants to repair this building but not directly. It still takes capital and time to restore it to its original state. Possibly by repairing this house to the craftsman who built the royal capital tower, Noctis can get it. One way that can be done is this. Noctis who explored every corner of the house. There are so many walls that have cracked. If it is left alone for a long time, this house will collapse over time. Noctis also held the necklace given to him by his parents. The only precious thing he could not forget from his beloved parents. Noctis, who was outside in front of his father's office, asked the two dwarves to repair just one crack. Noctis couldn't wait to see the results of the work done by the two dwarves. After waiting for a long time, Noctis wanted to check inside whether the work was done or not. When he entered, Noctis was surprised to see that his father's office was completely destroyed. The inside was badly damaged because the walls had been destroyed. Noctis did not expect this to happen beyond his expectations. His father's office, which had been a place to work, was now just a ruin. Everything was a mess. Noctis didn't know what to do if it got worse like this. Noctis saw a dwarf and called her Galena. Galena, who was hitting a hammer against the wall, said that if Noctis opened the office door, all the walls would be destroyed. Galena also hasn't done anything and the walls are already damaged like this. Noctis's memories of his father's office. When he was a baby, Noctis was often taken by his father to the office just to spend time with his son. Dad often entertained Noctis in his office room because boredom at work can make boredom. Therefore, the father likes to invite Noctis. Being child is a fun thing because he has a loving father figure. In his daily life, his father spends his time in the office. He has a lot of work to take care of. Likewise, Noctis's brother used to use pacifiers. Noctis and his brother often fought over the soft chair in his father's office. No one wanted to give in, so dad was able to persuade Noctis and his brother to sit together in the soft chair. Father never showed favoritism to his children. Everything he equalizes for the sake of the child's happiness. Now Noctis's beautiful memories with his father and older brother were shattered. One of the dwarf's hands slipped. Rail, who heard the noise, immediately came towards the feudal lord's room. Rail was also surprised that his room could be destroyed as he saw firsthand. Noctis was just silent, contemplating all this. Noctis didn't know what other plans would be destroyed like this. Rael regretted that the two dwarves could not repair the house like this. Even a terrorist would have no intention of leaving a region like this. Rael was sure that Noctis would be happy. He would show it to Noctis. The existence of the dwarf Galena was invisible to Noctis's eyes. He searched around the building. He was afraid that Galena would suddenly be hit by the collapsed wall while searching for Galena for a long time. Noctis finally found Galena sitting alone. She felt scared because she had failed to repair Noctis's father's office. Galena feels very guilty for making Noctis disappointed in her. Galena is just brooding and sad about all this. Noctis sat next to Galena. Noctis explained that he was currently very mixed up. Noctis was also dizzy thinking about everything that had already happened. If disaster comes, no one can detect it. Unpleasant events can come suddenly in conditions that are not ready to accept them. Galena, a dwarf, was very afraid if Noctis went and sat beside her just to blame Galena alone. Galena's body trembles if Noctis does something that is not okay. Noctis explained to Galena that there was nothing wrong and failed in this. Noctis is also a human being who is full of failures when doing things. Galena called Noctis an idiot. He is a dwarf who could possibly do something to repair a cracked wall. Hearing Galena's words, Noctis was silent for a moment. 
Maybe this was the fault of Noctis, who was too excited and in a hurry to send two dwarves to work. Meanwhile, the two dwarves had just arrived in this large and small region. Galena told me everything that happened in the room earlier. The hammer couldn't be used and the two dwarves couldn't control their powers properly. The only thing the dwarves can make themselves is a design like a miniature. Not that they can build a big house and then repair it. A wall that is cracked and then repaired is not the work of a dwarf. This was not the right thing to do. At the sight of Galena's miniature, Noctis seemed to be trembling. Noctis was just amazed at the miniature and trembled. The object touched by Noctis was the bridge. Then this sand is the material. Noctis asked Galena whether she liked big things or not. Even though Galena is a small dwarf, Galena really likes it when she makes designs. When looking at the miniature sand castle, Noctis will understand it himself. In Noctis's opinion, Galena being a dwarf was indeed an understatement. Being different from others, it was not a problem that should be surprised. Galena really wanted to create a country where people could survive by doing what they were good at. While talking, the incoherent Noctis said to Galena that he wanted to sleep as long as he wanted. Galena was confused by the words spoken. Noctis can sleep within three seconds. It is an extraordinary talent from a Noctis that is not known by many people. For Noctis, sleep is a pleasure in itself. By sleeping, Noctis will be calmer and more comfortable about the fatigue that exists in this world. Even Noctis also has a favorite pillow that can make him feel at home to sleep for a long time. Galena was surprised that Noctis was so devoted to his sleep. Galena doesn't think sleep can be a good talent. Every living person will definitely experience and feel sleep, especially when at night it is definitely obligatory to rest and sleep well. There wasn't just one miniature. Galena had a miniature of the level house which she showed to Noctis. When he saw the house, Noctis opened the windows and doors. According to him, the weather was hot, so he had to open them while joking with Galena. It's really hot, said Galena while laughing to Noctis. There was something strange about the miniature. The miniature that was designed was similar to a house that Noctis had previously seen. The small house suddenly became giant and large like a real house. Noctis stood in front of the house with two dwarves, Mare, Olivia, and Kukurua. Then Noctis entered the house with the others. The dwarf who saw the roof of the house was so gigantic. Mare, who was in the house, entered with Mr. Joseph. Mare saw every detail of the house, which was very good. Mare now carried a tier of flowers. They all walked around the house. Everyone is amazed because the house is luxurious to live in. Kukurua is also excited to live in this house if allowed. Happy looks were on their faces. A few days passed. Noctis was in a forest and saw a giant rabbit. Noctis wanted to take the rabbit using the knife in his hand. Running fast after the rabbit who was also very fast running. Noctis was not discouraged to get the giant rabbit. Noctis threw his sharp knife at the rabbit. The thrown knife did not hit the rabbit's body and missed the tree. The wrong strategy was done by Noctis while hunting the rabbit. Already running with passion, but the rabbit could not be at all. In the forest, it turned out that there were Mr. Ruse and Greg who came to approach Noctis. There was a bee wandering around, and there was also a deer. Greg and Ruse who carry arrows each want to hunt deer in the forest. The number of people who have increased in the large and small regions has increased by two people, said the dwarf. Ruse managed to hunt down a deer. Noctis was very happy. Grek and Ruse managed to take a decent game animal to eat and feast later that night. After hunting, they followed Noctis to eat. Noctis offered Greg and Ruse to eat at his place because the sauce was very good. Noctis thought this was a great opportunity with a very beautiful view of the place to eat. They all gathered to eat the game that had been obtained earlier. They worked together to cook the meat. Noctis asked Greg to light the fire, while Greg was busy collecting firewood. Olivia and Mare are preparing vegetables to complement the meat. Rail is preparing the drinks. Mr. Joseph and Greg are loading the meat onto the wood for grilling. This kind of togetherness will never be forgotten. Everyone was very busy with their respective tasks. The grilled meat had a wonderful marijuana aroma. I can't wait to eat the meat that is roasting on the fire that is very hot. Plus, there is vegetable soup that has been cooked on firewood. 
Everyone there couldn't wait to taste the results of the hunt. Mare continued to monitor the maturity of the meat so that it would not burn and the taste would remain good. While waiting, Noctis unleashed his skills so that over time the meat grew bigger than their very small height and size. The two dwarves were also surprised to see the meat and soup in the pot getting bigger. Mare and Mr. Joseph immediately shouted at the unexpected behavior of Noctis. After the meat is cooked. Mr. Joseph immediately cut the meat into several parts so that everything was divided equally. First, Mr. Joseph's garden gave the cooked meat to Noctis. The meat brought by Mr. Joseph in front of Noctis was very tempting. The very tasty aroma makes Noctis impatient to eat meat. Noctis has not eaten meat for a long time. Usually he often eats vegetables. Eating meat is a nutritional improvement so far that is difficult to obtain. Not having time to eat meat, suddenly the meat bounced very far away. Noctis will not let the meat fall to the ground in vain. Very quickly, Noctis chased the meat and caught it using his mouth. Mare, who saw the action of Noctis chasing the meat, was very excited. The people who were there also saw the action of Noctis catching the meat he wanted. Luckily, the big meat was immediately eaten by Noctis. There is no regret that the taste of the meat is very delicious and savory. It also feels very fitting in the mouth. While chasing the meat, Noctis did not realize that he did not fall to the ground but fell into the thigh of a sexy woman. It felt soft and smooth and didn't hurt at all. A few seconds later, Noctis was able to realize that he was in the body of a woman who did not use a shirt when looking at the sexy woman in front of him. Noctis did not blink at all. Both of his eyeballs immediately bulged unblinkingly. This is heaven for Noctis by seeing a woman like this. The woman was sleeping back home. Without realizing it, she finally woke up to see a small creature like Noctis. The woman woke up because there was a tingling feeling in her thigh. Noctis was so happy to see the woman and climbed on top of her body. When she was fully awake, the woman looked at Noctis sharply. Previously, she did not recognize Noctis, who was suddenly on her lap. Noctis explained to the sexy woman that he didn't know if he should bounce into this woman's body part. At first, Noctis was focusing on catching the meat that would bounce to the ground. After Noctis realized that he was on the woman's thigh, the woman woke up stretching her body and pulling her hand upwards. The woman knew that his name was Mr. Noctis and made sure that Noctis was okay. Everyone who was a friend of Noctis approached the giant woman. The giant woman who smelled cooked meat immediately took it from the plate that had been divided. The meat was very small. She wanted to try just one bite. It tasted very good. Noctis, who was still on the giant woman's thigh, just watched her eat the meat. The woman wanted to eat a lot of meat, so she approached the meat grill. After a few minutes, Noctis had become a large human being equivalent to the giant woman. When everyone ate the cooked roast meat, it seemed like there was no point at all because it had been finished off by the sexy woman. She apologized if the meat had been eaten, all without realizing it. It was really delicious. Everyone seemed to be annoyed with the sexy woman for not asking their permission first and just taking the meat. The sexy woman was just brooding because she knew she was wrong. At all the events that happened, Noctis expanded. Noctis knew his initial mistake started with him being too eager to chase the fallen meat. After the condition has improved, all who were there could continue to eat meat with the sexy woman. The meat was delicious with a special sauce made with fresh chili. Noctis asked the sexy woman, what was the first food she ate? The sexy woman explained that the first time she ate was various types of animals in this forest, one of which was animals, beans, and also monsters. Noctis was shocked when the woman mentioned that she also ate monsters. Noctis didn't believe it at first. How could scary monsters also be eaten by this beautiful woman? While the existence of monsters in his territory has been the culprit for the destruction of various buildings and places, it was inversely proportional to the sexy woman who easily said she ate monsters. Rail, who was sitting next to Noctis, said that it was only natural for the sexy woman to eat monsters because she was a giant with a big body. Noctis was silent while eating grilled meat. He still did not expect the facts he heard firsthand. Giants, as the name implies, have large and stout bodies. 
Giants also have a strong physique thanks to their large bodies easily destroying people who become targets. Noctis, who looked at the face of a sexy girl named Verdina. Noctis was worried that Verdina would prey on his friends too. Her blindness is one of the giants who has just been found to have a beautiful and sexy face. Verdina didn't stop eating. She kept adding to the roasted meat. It looked like she was really hungry. It had been a long time since she had eaten this cooked meat. Verdina usually eats raw game meat that still has a lot of blood and feces. After her plate was empty, she had eaten all the food. Verdina thanked Noctis for being willing to give her this much and delicious food. Noctis looked exhausted serving Verdina from earlier, while the other friends were busy chatting while eating grilled meat. Mare, who came near Noctis, immediately thanked him for his cooperation. The look on his face that was already starting to get tired made Noctis have used a lot of his skills earlier. Mare told Noctis to go home from now on and rest in his room. Noctis wanted to go home immediately, and then did not forget to say goodbye to the giant girl Verdina. Verdina was sad to be left by Noctis, who had been very kind to her earlier. When he was about to leave, Verdina cried. Mare and Noctis were confused why she screamed, crying like that in front of the two of them. Noctis had explained that he could not if he had to take care of the child, who was too big. Even Noctis had been overwhelmed taking care of everything to please Verdina. Noctis asked Verdina to be careful about what she had done. Noctis was already willing to understand. If he brought Verdina with a giant size like this, it would be a problem. Noctis will try to use his skills with Verdina. Noctis asked Verdina to relax and accept the skills that would be given to Noctis. Verdina began to concentrate. After doing the skills, Verdina finally became small according to the size of Noctis and his friends. Verdina was very happy to see where Noctis and his friends lived in the big and small areas. Verdina said it was amazing when she turned into a small person, when Noctis was having a panga meat feast in the mountains. Noctis returned with a girl named Verdina. Maybe the family and others don't mind this. When Noctis applies skills, even slimes have the power to refuse to refuse. Verdina was very amazed by the things she had never seen and tried at all. While Noctis was very sleepy and also tired of going to bed to rest due to fatigue during the day, Verdina wanted to take Noctis on a tour of the big and small areas. Noctis refused because he was going to sleep. Mare and Olive invite Verdina to take a shower to prepare for tomorrow. Olivia told Verdina to change her clothes too. While sleeping, Noctis did not realize that Verdina was beside him not wearing any clothes at all. At that time, Noctis woke up without realizing that he had touched Verdina's body. A few minutes later, Noctis realized that he had done something he shouldn't have done. Mare came to the room where Noctis was with Verdina. Mare brought him a plum. Verdina loved the plums. Verdina can't wait to explore the big and small regions. She asked Noctis to put on clothes quickly while she was not wearing any clothes at all. Impatient and in a hurry, Verdina pulled Noctis's hand while running. Kukurua, who said good morning to Noctis. First, Noctis invited Verdina to go to a field filled with vegetable plants. Verdina is curious whether the vegetables can be harvested or not. Suddenly, Kukurua was pulling carrots quickly. Some vegetables were ready to be harvested, and some were not ready to be harvested. Verdina was surprised that the roots of the vegetables were white. Noctis asks if giants eat vegetables too. Verdina explained that she also ate very delicious vegetables. Kukurua, who was busy eating raw vegetables with gusto in front of Verdina and Noctis. There is also a type of radish vegetable that is grown. The taste of the radish grown by Noctis is different from other radishes. It tastes sweet. Verdina was very happy, especially when eating together was fun. This was the first time Verdina had seen something like this. Verdina also didn't know how to cook it. Noctis thought that Verdina had been living alone in the forest all this time. Kukurua also took a pumpkin for Verdina to taste. While out in the fields, there were some birds chirping at each other. Something bad is about to happen. The sign of the silver moon, a wolf with blood-red eyes and shining silver fur. It is a very dangerous monster living in the big forest. 